What is up everybody? It's Bloodstalker. We're back with another video. Now, before we get started, I just want to say thank you guys to everybody who supported the channel. Thank you guys sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Um, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, without you guys coming every day and watching the videos and being supportive in the comments and everything, it means a lot from me to you, honestly. Um, you know, I get out of the sentimental stuff. Um, today, <clears throat> we're going to move forward. Um, there's going to be some new content coming to the channel. This game may or may not be on it. I don't know. I want you guys to let me know your honest opinion of it. Um, I got a new key today. This was given to me by Kate Keymailer by the developers. I had requested a key on it along with some other games, and this one popped up in my mailbox the, this morning when I got up. Um, I thought it'd be cool. I wanted to check it out. I'm not a big, huge MMO player. I'm not an expert on MMOs. I am not the source for all MMO knowledge. But I do like the idea of MMOs. I just, you know, sometimes you want to do it, sometimes you don't. So I saw this game come out. It's in early access. And so I requested the key. The game came out back in December. I um, believe it came out on December 13th last year, 2016. Um, it's called Guardians of Ember. It's made by, it's developed by RuneWalker. And it's been published by Insel Games. Now, RuneWalker created Runes of Magic and Dragon's Prophet. And they also have a handful of other mobile games, I believe. Um, this one is it's touted as an MMORPG. So, you've got the MMO aspects. Now, you can start off, right now they have five classes. I don't know if there's plans to expand it. I haven't really seen too much on a dev blog for it. But, just looking at... The overall story of the game and what's going on in it, it seems kind of interesting. There's still a lot of things that need to be done to the game. Just, I mean, overall playability, though, it's there. There's not, it's not, you know, half complete or whatnot. You've got quests. You've got a lot of stuff you can do in the game. It is strictly online. You can either play just solo things yourself or you can team up with other people. So you have that multiplayer aspect or single player aspect. Now, again, in MMO terms, the kind of cool thing about it is you don't have to have a group to do things. You can do it by yourself. Um, you can always party up with somebody and have fun. Now, the, fav the five main classes they have in the game right now are Ranger, Priest, Fighter, or Warrior, or a Fighter, excuse me, um, Engineer, and then Arcanist, or a Mage. The engineer is kind of cool because he blows stuff up. I mean, it just every time I think of an engineer in, in a fantasy game like this, I always think of someone running around with a bomb strapped to his back just tossing dynamite everywhere. So, <clears throat> you do have that aspect. Now, they've got four races in the game. They've got human, elf, dwarf, and then Nia, which you saw earlier is a little female character. Um, I think it's kind of like a fairy almost type cross. I, st I just went with the human and I went with the ranger. The Ranger's pretty neat. Now, you can have guns in the game. Like, um, I, they, they call them like a fighter rifle or whatever. But you can use the rifle. You can use your bow. Um, but you start out, the tutorial's pretty easy. I mean, it's it's not... I played um, Lord of the Rings online. That's pretty much the only MMO, other MMO I've kind of got into. It's only because Jester wanted me to play it with him. And it's free to play. I wasn't too impressed with it. It's an older game. They hadn't really done a lot to it. It's free to play, though, so, I mean, you can't really complain about stuff like that. Now, of course, with all free to play games, you always have the pay to play game. You can either play it for free and miss out on a lot of the bonus content, or you can pay to get other stuff. Now, now this game, number one, it's an MMO that's in early access. Number two, it does have paid for downloadable content in it and it does have paid for content inside it i have not seen it inside the game this is coming from the reviews it's got mixed reviews half and half you got people either love it or they hate it um i do read reviews reviews do not sway my opinion of a game because most times that ten nine times out of ten someone's going to write a review they're going to write because they're either really angry or because they really love the game you're not, you very rarely, you get very few views that are actual purposefully written reviews. And every once in a while you do see those where you get somebody, they say they like the game, but then they give you the pros and the cons of it. And that's very good. That's If you're going to write a review on a game, I suggest you, you give the good and the bad. You don't just tout how awesome it is. And I can't, I mean, I'm guilty of doing that on some games because I really like them. Um, now this game, I'm, right now I'm, 
I'm kind of hit or miss on it. I do enjoy playing it. It's kind of fun, but I haven't I haven't really invested a lot of time into it. I've probably got about, I want to say about an hour and a half, two hours into it now. Um, I was going to record just like a start doing like a Let's Play series on it. And I started, no, let me, let's play it, record some footage of it, and then talk about it. Because, number one, when new games come out in early access, and, and this is something that a lot of people in YouTube have been talking about. I know that Cage and all them have been talking about it, and they talked about it on the stream tonight. This is Friday night, by the way. And it made me start thinking yet again, this is the way things go. Um, early access games have gotten a bad rap. And I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people look at it and they think early access, abandoned projects, just going after the money. And I kind of lean towards the opinion that they, I haven't really seen too many of that. I personally have not had an early access game that I played. Now I've only been back into PC gaming for like a couple years now, but I haven't ran into an early access game that I've gotten that has been completely hundred percent abandoned. They felt like they're being abandoned. And that's that kind of, I think that's where that opinion comes in a lot of the times. Um, I've got several examples of those games, like Kingdoms. I got Kingdoms a long time ago, and it was an okay game back in the day. It had a lot of bugs and a lot of problems. But you look at where Kingdoms is at now, and it's a totally different place. <laughs> I mean, I've watched a lot of Game Edge's videos on it, and I'm like, wow, they're, they're really coming along. I'm glad I still got that game. I'm really glad that I kept it. And, you know, that's kind of refreshing. I think Savage Lands is another prime example of that. Um... Savage Lands had a really bad rap, but now they're starting to put more into it. You know, they created the beta branch, they, they retired the legacy. And a lot of these things have common, common. some of these games have common issues with them in themselves. Um, you got to realize when you're creating an early access game, the game engine you choose to build upon, if you're wanting, if you're, if I want to make a game, I'm going to go look for a reasonably priced game engine to build upon that I can afford at the time because you don't have all that money up front. So you either have to get the money or save the money or do whatever in order to get that or buy an older game engine, possibly. Um, like, Subsistence is built on Unreal 4. Now, the difference about using an older version of Unreal is that Unreal is a really good pl gaming platform, and a lot of games are built on Unreal. Um, Voxel-based environments, like Seven Days to Die, Minecraft. I mean, you don't realize it, but they're Voxel-based games. Then you come into games like Rust and Savage Lands. They're Unity-based games. Unity is not so friendly sometimes. Um, you look at Rust and how Rust used to be Rust Legacy, and what they used to call it, and they've completely gotten rid of that. What Rust was two years ago and what Rust is now is totally different. The total, I mean, when I say totally different is the only commonality you have is a torch and a rock, <laughs> kind of, from back then. The hatchets look, they still kind of have the same hatchet or axe thing. But the, how you gather resources, how you do anything in the game, the, the animals, the AI, it's all different. They completely revamped that game because of Unity. Um, Savage Lands is kind of, was kind of in the same boat. That game was based off Unity, and, and it kind of killed it for a little bit. But they're coming back with it. Kingdom, I'm not sure what game engine it's based off of, but I think a lot of theirs was that they're just really working on stuff. Kingdoms, I think, kind of hurt themselves in the sense that they didn't talk a lot about what they were working on, what they're going to do, what they're ultimately were trying to do. But I'm not saying it's a bad thing. They're just focused on getting the game get made. Badia is another example for an early access game that is continuing to make progress. So, you know, you hear a lot of people say that early access games are just going after your money. Well, my experience, and this is just from my perspective of it, is that the game early access games I've played, I've enjoyed and I've stuck with. Um, out of the probably twenty something, I couldn't even mention. I'd have to I'd have to sit down and look at my Steam my Steam account and look. But out of all those early access games, I've only ever refunded one game, and that was because the game just was not playable. Period. I could not. I mean, I tried to play the game. I think I started like 10 or 11 times, and every time I started it, I would, it was, I would sometimes I would either die when the game first kicked on, or I would get stuck in the world, and that's a problem, and that game had been out for a while, and I mean, it had been out for quite a while, and it, that would, those are things that should have been fixed to begin with, you know, so I guess when I say, when I come down to it, this being an early access game, um, the one thing that I can't speak to on this game is that it's an MMO, so I can't compare it to World of Warcraft. I can't compare. I can compare it to Lord of the Rings, 
online. That's about it. But I mean, I think Forgotten Realms. I play Forgotten. This this reminds me of the Forgotten Realms that was free on Xbox One and on on PC. Kind of reminds me along that aspect. It's kind of a fun just hack and slash type game. You want to play some. I mean, the graphics are beautiful to it. It's got really good graphics for for MMO. Um, you can zoom in with your scrap mouse wheel, and you can get really fine detail on things. And it's got some pretty cool pretty cool aspects and functionality. Um, now, I think it's important that when we talk about this now, I'm not being paid to say this to you guys. I was given the free, the key free because I requested a key for it. Um, my, I have no obligations at all to the devs of this game. I could either just keep the key and play it for myself, not do anything on it. But I like to let you guys know because this is what being part of this YouTube channel is about. It's about playing games, talking about them, showing things off, and just having fun. I know we've gotten more of joking around and playing and having fun, but I kind of want to re recircle the wagons again, come back to the whole purpose of what I got into YouTube for was to talk about games. Because that's what I like to do. It's what we all like to do. That's what bonds us all together and puts us all together in the same same boat, regardless of where we're from, as I've always said. You know, all around the world, people watch this channel. Maybe one or two people from certain regions or areas, but for the mass, mass part of it all, we all have the same thing in common. We play games. And so when it comes down to it, if you're an MMO fan, you know, I would say you might want to check this game out, look at it. Um, keep in mind, though, it is, it, you have to pay, it's not a free one. It's $19.99 start off. Um, now, the bad part about it is, and this is the negative that goes against early access games, and it went against um, ARK, which is a huge early access game. It's done so well. People still play it, but they got pissed off about it was when they started doing paid-for downloadable content on a game that's not even finished yet. Um, my my argument, my saving grace for it, and I, I mean, I don't, I love ARK. ARK is a very well done game, and it's going to be completed. It's not going to be one that's going to all of a sudden be abandoned, and we're going to be like, what the hell? It's going to be done. It's, I mean, they've they've got a great, they've got a huge development, not a huge, they've got a pretty good sized development team for it. They've got a foundation for a company that's going to be around and make more games. So, I kind of go along with that. I mean, I'm okay, I'm a little bit more okay with it. Um, but, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm mad about this one, but that's kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth on this. The reason it puts a bad taste in my mouth on this game is because the paid content is just additional items, basically, or perks in the game, which typically you see those type of things on free MMOs that you pay to play. So that you, you know, pay to, pay to win, I guess is the best way to say it. But. So far, I haven't seen where you in-game buy content. And if that's a thing and somebody knows it, you've seen it, you you know where it's at, let me know in the comments because I haven't seen it. Like I said, I haven't really, I mean, I've tried to dig for it. I couldn't really see where you did it. I saw where you could buy like the, they have three different packages for the game currently. Right now, you can buy just the regular edition. It's $19.99. You can buy the um, Immortal Edition for nineteen. I don't know if it's an additional it shows it as downloadable content for the game, but the game itself costs nineteen ninety nine, so that's forty bucks on top of that. Which I really don't think that's right, though. Looking at the Steam, how it is, I think you buy, you get the Immortal Edition, which is just nineteen. Now you can get the Demigod Edition, which is twenty nine ninety nine, or you can get the Demigod. Now, what does that mean? So the the regular Immortal Edition is the one I have. It basically, download, the Mortal Edition downloadable content contains 20 Founder Loot Orbs, Mortal Title, um, 10 Avatar Dolls. I don't, those are in-game items. The items for your Mortal and Immortal Editions are not automatically credited to your game account during your access. Instead, you'll get a download DLC, DLC key to redeem in-game. Check your DLCs for Guardians of Ember, which I haven't done that yet. I've still I've got my key in there. Just log in the game, open the Frozen Ember Shop via the Bulls. Yeah, so you can do that. So it's it's access to get these items in the game. Um, the tier, the pricing point, again, you got nineteen dollars, nineteen ninety nine for the mortal content. You got twenty or let me see, I believe twenty nine ninety nine for the for the immortal content, and you got forty nine ninety nine. I'm sorry, demigod content, and for the immortal content is forty nine ninety nine. Um, that's kind of messed up, in my opinion. But, you know, again, take it with a grain of salt. You can buy this game for nineteen ninety nine, and you don't need to buy all that extra stuff. 
and you can still have fun with it and still enjoy it. But again, I'm not saying run out and buy the game. Formulate your opinion, watch videos on it, and check it out. Um, I would say when it comes to the reviews of the game, I again, I read the reviews, but I don't judge, make my judgment call on the reviews. Um, you know, you get reviews like recommended, they love it. Um, you get reviews where it's like they don't recommend it, and they're like, it's it's a free, you know, they, they say the thing about the pay for stuff. I've seen a lot of people that have liked the game who've got a lot of hours in it. The people that don't like the game have got like 25, 14 hours. There are some people with lower hours than that. Um, but I've yet, to, I've seen the highest hours I've seen played that don't recommend it are, is 95. Now, I would look at more into that and understand it better and probably agree with it better in that case. Um, if you're going to review a game, I would suggest you have more time in it than a few hours into it when I say review it on Steam or whatnot. And when you do a review on Steam, you want to put pros and cons of the game. I mean, legitimately. Because when, when it boils down to it all, I mean, there's always going to be some goods and bads of a game. There's very few games that are perfect when they come out the box. But when it comes to stuff like this, I really just stay away from... <laughs> reviews I mean I read them just to kind of get I try to see what why everybody's having issues with it and if you can start seeing the, the the issues with it I mean yeah <clears throat> when it comes down to it there's most of them have been about the downloadable content honestly there are some other ones that just kind of are very good What's the word for it? They they just they, they play a lot of MMOs. And I would trust more people that have opinion of MMOs versus that. And that's the one thing about Steam is someone writes a review, you can click on them and look at their profile and see what they play, if it's a Steam game, that is. So you can get an idea of, of you know, how much they've got. If you see someone that gave a game a bad review and they've got, like, one or two games in their library, I'm kind of be questioning that. Now, again, this game in itself is fun i've had a lot of fun with it as you can tell just watching the footage in the background it's kind of neat it's got it's got some cool stuff to it um when i switched out my bow to i switched my bow out to a, a gun that i found i picked up an orb or whatnot or I picked up a present or a prize as you level you get stuff it has a different type of skill system that i'm really not familiar with that i've never seen in a game you basically have like four categories you go by um you can level them up you get six points per level usually but you can dump a point into it, and it, it affects a certain range of things, like certain types of damage, like regular damage, magical damage, speed, attack, things like that. And then you also have, on top of that, skills, um, special skill kits, I guess, which is common in the MMO world, where you just you know hit your one key or whatnot, and you do a special attack. So it's kind of cool in that aspect. Um, when it comes down to it, though, all... When you're looking for a fun MMO to play, to me, this is my opinion again, I want something that's easy to understand, easy to get into, and, and not overly complicated. Um, <clears throat> again, back to Lord of the Rings Online, I thought it was a fun game, but getting through the tutorial, number one, was a pain in the butt. That was ridiculous. And number two, just trying to figure out what to do and how to do it wasn't easy. You had so much stuff in there. This game has a lot of stuff in it, too. I'm not saying that it's like, hey, anybody can just pick it up and start playing it. And there's still things that I haven't found, and there's things that I've realized after I've, after I've re started, re after I recorded the footage for it. So when it comes, when it comes into that aspect, the, game's, the game has potential. Um, it's only been out on um, early access for about, right at a month, pretty much. I mean, we're right at the one-month mark. So, if you want to keep an eye on it, maybe add it to your wish list and just look at it and see how it does. See what, see if the reviews change. Um, prime examples like Savage Lands, it slowly kind of goes up and down on there. Um, there's a lot of games that, like Kingdoms, overall the reviews start going up. They become positive again because of that aspect. So, when you, when you look at that stuff, you want to kind of pay attention to it. But when it goes back to it all, the best way to find out about a game, just go watch the video on it. You can pretty much watch a 20-minute video or 30-minute video on a game for the first time, and you'll get an idea of it. Um, uh, one like this one, probably not, because you're not really getting to see the game. You're just seeing the gameplay. You're not really experiencing it through the eyes. 
So like I said, I usually do a video kind of like this on new games that I'm going to start playing. See what you guys think about them. Get them out there. Then I'll do a thir full, 30, full 20 to 30 minute video on it where we go out and start playing. We start doing some of the quests. I did a couple of quests in it. I like the questing system. It's very, very easy, just like most of them. It tells you where you're going, where you need to go, and what you need to do. So I do like the game. I'm going to keep playing it, whether or not it shows up on the channel in the future. That's up to you guys if you're interested in it or not. Again, I don't like to shove content down your throat. I have a lot of games in my library, and for those of you who follow me on Steam, um, or, you know, friends with me on Steam, you see what's in my library, and you know that I don't really... There, I mean, I have games that I've never even installed yet. So, and I mean, Sheldon is AFK kind of gave me a rib on the Forest, because I have had Forest, but I just never played it. <laughs> so, you know, you might some of these games might eventually come down... I don't jump on. I don't want to jump on trends. Like um, I did one video on Astroneer. I saw that everybody else was doing it. I didn't want to just, you know, if, if someone's overly providing content for a game, I don't want to do it sometimes. And I, I, I just, I just don't because, you know, if you can watch that person's video or somebody else's video, what's enticing you to come watch mine? And trying to grow into YouTube and stuff, I got to find those little niche games. I mean, there's a lot of people now playing subsistence. There's people that have just started playing subsistence in the last couple of weeks that get 20 or 30 times more views than my videos do. Does it bother me? Deep down inside, kind of. But the reality is that I'm happy with what I've established with this channel and what we're growing to be. Um, there's still, I still get comments on the very first subsistence video, or not the very, the second subsistence video I did, just talking about is this the next big game? Um, my Badia videos get tons of views. It's even my old, old one still. I've got my one of the video, one of the update videos is still growing. So, you know, how, how, what determines the interest of a game is, you know, sometimes older games do get some more re retention back to them, especially in the early access game field. I mean, you just look at it. It's amazing how many early access games are still around and still in early access for a couple of years and they're still making progress. I mean, ARK's been out for over a year and a half now. It's coming up on, this June will be two years, Mark, and hopefully by then it'll be fully released. You know, they've already released on Xbox and on PlayStation, and they're on PC, so they're they're fixing to just do it all up. They're fixing to do some innovative things, apparently. Um, Rust. <clears throat> Rust is still in development, but you know, it's making headway. It's still making, it's making that forward momentum. Kingdoms. Um, Badia, it's moving, really moving forward fast. And it's a newer early access game, though. Um, probably the top, my top all-time early access game as of right now, for my opinion, is Subsistence Easy. That is probably one of the best games early access-wise that is awesome, gets continuous attention and updates, and every update is a positive. Um, you know, there might be a bug result from it, but it gets fixed rather quickly. But the ultimate goal of it is that game just keeps moving forward and it's becoming a really hell of a, good, hell of a damn good game. I don't play Seven Days to Die. I played a little bit of it. Um, I really like Seven Days to Die, though. I just I just can't play it. I just I'm, I suck at it. It, is, it is just blows my mind. Imperion. I've got Imperion. I've played Imperion for a long time. And, um, you know, I quit playing it for a while. It's just like Kingdoms. I quit playing those games for a while. And now you look at where those games are and how good they're doing, and it's just like, wow, God, I should have been playing this all this time. And so, you know, one day these games, these games are going to pop back up. You never know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I'd like to start doing some content on it, but if you guys don't want to see, if you're not too interested in it, let me know. By all means, speak up. I, I want to hear your voice on this. If you played this game, let me know. If you own this game, say something. I'm just curious to see how it's how how it's going to shape up and turn out because I do want to play an MMO and I'm trying to find the right one and I don't want to just run around. I'm not going to play World of Warcraft because it's so widely played and I just don't want to get into it. And I know that the the biggest issue in MMOs is the constant nerfing of of characters and it's just like in Ark when Ark first came out, you know. For the first six months of ARC, it was great. And then all of a sudden, they started nerfing things. They started nerfing the Gigas. They started nerfing the Quetzals. They started nerfing this, nerfing that. And it just became so just frustrating. And they do it in MMOs all the time with classes. If a class becomes... People figure out how to how to make the perfect class and do it. Uh, not perfect, but make it make a strong class that just dominates. 
it gets nerfed. Um, they've done it in every MMO out there. It's always gets done. It's kind of like the curse of it. And so with all that being said, you know, what will happen with this one? Will it become that certain things become overly powerful? I don't know. I really don't know. But I've got a key for it. I'm going to keep playing it. And um, we'll see what happens. So you guys leave a, leave, a, leave a comment down there and let me know what you think about it. If you want to see this, if you'd be interested in finding more out about this game, I would love to show it to you guys, whether it be through streaming it one night. I might do it that way, just stream stream play it and um, upload that stream and go from there. Because after tonight's fiasco of Postal 2, I'm not going to be doing that again. That game's fun, but it's just old and very politically incorrect nowadays time. So thank you guys for sticking around. Um, and thank you guys so much for your support, man. We're, I mean, it's amazing how how fast we've this channel's grown in the last couple of months. It just really amazes me. So, this has been Guardian of Embers. I've been Bloodstalker, and as always, peace out, y'all.